Hi and welcome back to A Level Biology Help. So today I'm going to be taking you through the second required practical for AQA A Level Biology, which is the preparation of stained squashes of cells from plant root tips, set up and use of an optical microscope to identify the stages of mitosis in these stained squashes, and the calculation of a mitotic index. Before I take you through the practical, I would recommend that you get familiar with the content for cell cycle and mitosis. And I have a video on that, so if you aren't confident with that topic, I recommend watching my video. I will put a link up in the corner. Right, so let's get on with the practical. So what are the main objectives of this practical? To recognise and understand the stages of mitosis, which you should already be familiar with from the mitosis chapter. Preparing a temporary mount to observe mitosis. A temporary mount is just a fancy term for a microscope slide. And the calculation of mitotic index, which should be new to you. So now I'm going to be taking through the practical procedure. So the first step is that you take a root of garlic or onion or some kind of root vegetable and cut a piece of the root tip, which should be around, it should be around half a centimetre instead of one centimetre, but imagine that says half a centimetre. Now the reason that we used a root tip instead of just a normal part of the root is because the root tip is the most likely to be um, damaged by the environment so it is the part of the root that is most actively dividing so you are more likely to be able to observe the stages of mitosis. So if I draw, this is a really bad drawing but if I draw a root you would just cut off a small piece of it. So if I just get rid of that, the next step is that you place in heated one molar hydrochloric acid for five minutes. So the reason for this step is to make the cells from the root tip more permeable so that when we add the stain later, the stain can enter the cells and bind to the bases in DNA so that the chromosomes become visible. And the reason why the acid is heated is to just speed up the rate of reaction. And you do that for five minutes. After the root tip has been soaked in acid, heated acid, you need to rinse the root in tap water to get rid of excess acid. I can just write that here. Get rid of excess acid. Great. And you would normally do this on a watch glass, which is looks like a massive contact lens. So if you imagine this is your watch glass and you have your if I might just get a different colour to make this easier. So if you have your root tip that's been soaked in acid, you would just add a few drops of water with a pipette. I'll just get rid of that. Fabulous. The next step then is to stain with toluidine blue. Some other schools might use a different stain, but the one that quite a lot of schools use is called toluidine blue, which is a, as the name suggests, a blue stain. The reason that we add a stain is to make the chromosomes visible, because if you didn't add the stain, then you wouldn't be able to see the chromosomes, so therefore you couldn't observe the stages of mitosis. So as I said before, the acid that you soak the root in breaks apart the hydrogen bonds in the DNA inside the root cells. This means that the toluidine blue can bind to the bases, the nitrogenous bases, and make the chromosomes visible. You need to add a few drops of toluidine blue. The next step is that you need to macerate 
which is a fancy term for squash. With a needle, this basically ensures that the cells are flattened so that um, they are more easily visible. An important point to note is that the maceration needs to happen thoroughly. This ensures that the cells have been broken open so that the stain actually can enter the cells. The next step is to then transfer the tip, the macerated tip, onto a microscope slide. It is ideal that you do this in the centre of the slide so that it is easier once you place it under a microscope. So if I attempt to draw a microscope slide, oh, you would add your root tip in the middle. The next step then is to lower the glass tip on top. Make sure before you do this that the um, some of the root tip contains the stain and you might want to add a couple of drops of water as well, that's pretty important, so I might just add. Add a drop of water. It is important that you don't add any excess liquid because that might lead to artefacts. So things that you might mistake to be cells but they're not. So when you are lowering your glass slip onto your root tip, you need to do this using a mounted needle. Mounted needle is basically, well, as the name suggests, a long needle shaped piece of metal. And you do this at an angle of 45 degrees, so it's quite specific. And this is to prevent air bubbles, because air bubbles definitely affect how you view your tip, because it might block the view of the tip or might make you think that this is a, another cell when it's just an air bubble. The next step is to firmly squash the glass slip onto the root tip so that the cells are flattened so they're easier to see. I need to do this by pressing down and not sideways because if you press sideways then this will break the chromosomes so they wouldn't be able to undergo mitosis so you wouldn't be able to observe the stages. Then the final step is to place under, place under a microscope, which you will have probably already covered at GCSC, and set the objective lens to the lowest magnification. This should probably be about 10 times on standard microscopes, I think. And then you need to observe the stages of mitosis, the different stages of mitosis. So you need to repeat this experiment gradually increasing your magnification. A successful image of the cells undergoing mitosis could look a little bit like this. Now, if you have a good understanding of um, mitosis, you might be able to identify the stages here. So as you can see, this cell here, the chromosomes aren't visible as thread-like structures and if you are familiar with mitosis you would then be able to conclude that this is probably interphase. This, oh that wasn't meant to appear, I might just get rid of that. This step here, as you can see, the um, spindle fibres are pulling apart the chromosomes by the centromeres, so we can say that this is anaphase. In this stage here, the chromosomes are kind of at the equator of the cell, which means the middle of the cell, just about being started to be pull up, pulled apart. So this could be metaphase. So that is basically the end of the actual practical stuff. So now you need to know how to calculate mitotic index, which we, you wouldn't have come across before, I'm assuming.
So you calculate mitotic index by looking at the number of cells undergoing mitosis, so the visible chromosomes. You don't count interphase when calculating mitotic index as a cell undergoing mitosis, divided by the total number of cells times 100. Now, your school might not include this 100 stage, but it is ideal that you multiply by 100 because that gives the answer as a percentage, which is crucial as that allows comparison between different kinds of tissues if you want to go on to further develop an experiment. So here is an image that I have stolen off the internet. Feel free to pause the video and have a go before I start. So the first thing that we need to calculate is the number of cells undergoing mitosis. So if we change the colour of the pen to red to make it easier to see, we can start to count the number of cells undergoing mitosis. So this one is undergoing mitosis. It looks like anaphase. This one looks like it is. This one looks like it's undergoing telophase. This one looks like it might be undergoing mitosis. This one's definitely metaphase. This one could possibly be mitosis. This one may be that one, but we'll leave that for a bit. Definitely this one, this one, telophase, metaphase, anaphase, anaphase. This one, this one, this one, this one. So it has already come up on the screen, but the number of cells going mitosis is roughly about 20. I haven't counted all of them, but it is roughly 20. They need to divide this by the total number of cells. I've already counted this, which is 75. So now I need to calculate the mitotic index. So this will be 20 divided by 75 times 100 and you would get an answer of 26.7% rounded to three significant figures. So this is your answer for mitotic index. The next thing that it is good to know for your practical endorsement is the risk assessment. So here I've just made a table containing some of the hazards, risks and controls for this experiment. This is not all of them, but it is just a selection of some of them. So you have your scalpel with which you cut the root tip off the root and obviously there's a risk of cutting yourself and then the control would be to cut away from your fingers and keep the scalpel away from the bench because if the scalpel falls off the bench then someone could step on it. Um, a similar risk and control is there for a broken glass from the slide of the cover slip. And then you have Irritation risks such as from the use of hydrochloric acid and the toluidine stain, which could cause irritation to the eyes and previous injuries. So if you already have, say, a cut on your finger, that could be dangerous if hydrochloric acid or toluidine stain gets in there. And the control for this kind of um, hazard is to wear eye protection, so your goggles, tie up your long hair, avoid contact with skin and things like that. Righty ho, so now I'm going to get on to some exam questions that are associated with this practical. So this is one that I'm going to take you through now. So a student investigated mitosis in the tissue from an onion root tip. So this is very similar to the practical that we have just looked at. So it says the student prepared a temporary mount of the onion tissue on a glass slide. She covered the tissue with a cover slip. She was then given the following instruction. Push down hard on the cover slip, but do not push the cover slip sideways. Explain why she was given this instruction. So as the question says explain, you need to write why this instruction was given. So as I said earlier, the cover slip needs to be squashed hard onto the cells to make the cells flatten so that the chromosomes are more visible and I said that the cover slip must not be pushed sideways to avoid breaking the chromosomes so here is what I've written pushing hard squashes the tissue and not pushing sideways avoids the chromosomes breaking 
So if we look at the mark scheme, mark point one, push hard means that this tissue is squashed or you can put spread, it doesn't matter which one you put, we put squashed so we would get that mark. Mark point two, not pushing sideways means that the rolling of cells is avoided or you can write the breaking of chromosomes is avoided. We wrote that um, not pushing sideways avoids the chromosomes breaking, so we would get both marks for this question. Now here it says neutral to see cells clearly because this isn't very scientific and it is not um, displaying your knowledge of practical skills. So there is a risk there that the examiner might not give you a mark as it says neutral. So let's look at the next part of the question. So the image below shows one cell the student saw in this onion tissue. The question says, the student concluded that the cell in the image above was in the anaphase stage of mitosis. Already you might underline the term anaphase and think, well, that is a stage when the um, sister chromatids are pulled apart by the centromeres to the opposite poles of the cell by the spindle fibres. So you then might start to link that to what you can see in the picture. So was she correct to give two reasons for your answer? So as the answer, the, sorry, the question, sorry, is says two written in bold, that means that you have to put two reasons to get full marks. So this is what I've suggested. So I've put yes, because the chromatids are at the poles of the spindle. So here they are beginning to go towards the pole of the spindle, which is about here and here. And also I've put a yes because the V-shape of the sister chromatids, so as you can see we've got a V-shape here, V-shape here, etc. And I've put sister chromatids because sister chromatids are the both of the arms of the same chromosome. So remember that a chromatid is just one arm. And sister chromatids are the singular arms that previously belonged to the same chromosome. So the V-shape of the sister chromatids show that they have been pulled apart at their centromeres. It's crucial that you write at their centromeres at that level. Remembering that the centromere is the middle or the point where the two sister chromatids come together on the chromosome. So if we look at the mark scheme, putting no or yes doesn't gain you any marks. So even if you put no, you can possibly still get some marks. So the first marking point, the chromosomes, or the chromatids, so you can put either one of these, are in two groups at the poles of the spindle, or at the end of the spindle. We put that the chromatids are at the poles of the spindle, so we would get this mark. Here it says do not accept ends of the cell because this is not A-level terminology. You need to refer to the poles and also the spindle, as this is A-level now. So if you put this, you wouldn't get that first marking point. So the second marking point says, the V-shape shows that the sister chromatids, you do not need to put sister as it is in brackets here, have been pulled apart at their centromeres, or you can put that centromeres of the sister chromatids have been pulled apart. So I put that the V-shape shows that they have been pulled apart at their centromeres, so I'll get both marked for this question. The last question that I'm going to take you through, I think, is a calculation question. So the student counted the number of cells she observed in each stage of mitosis. Of the 200 cells she counted, only six were in anaphase. One cell cycle of onion root tissue takes 16 hours. Calculate how many minutes these cells spend in anaphase. Show your work in. So this question is a more complicated extension of a mitotic index calculation as it is asking you to calculate mitotic index but only with anaphase and then it's asking you about how many minutes they spent in this stage of mitosis. So the first step then is to calculate a kind of mitotic index. So this would be six and this is the number of cells in anaphase divided by 200, which are the number total number of cells that she counted, which would give you an answer of 0 0.03.
The next step then would be to look at the timings. So as the question says, one cell cycle takes 16 hours. However, the answer is wanting you to write it in minutes. And there are 16 minutes in an hour. So we do the sum 16 times 60, which is 960. You then multiply this timing by the mitotic index so you can calculate how many minutes the cells spend in anaphase. So 0.03 times 960 equals 28.8. And I have just rounded that up to 29 minutes for simplicity. So if we look at the mark scheme, the first marking point comes from your working, even though it isn't in the mark scheme. So 28.8, you can put all 29, it doesn't matter if you round up or not. So we would get both marks for the question as we got the answer right. However, it says if incorrect, so if you didn't get one of these numbers, allow 6 divided by 200 times 960. So if you did this sum, which is the sum that you need to get the right answer, but you somehow didn't get the right answer, you can get one mark. Right, that is all I want to say for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments and I, I will see you in my next video. Bye.